now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and welcome to our GRESB 101 webinar. Thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is Ashley Douches, and I am the Director of Consulting at GOBI. The session today will be recorded and sent to all participants on today's call. You are welcome to share the session with anyone whom you feel may benefit. Today's session will run about 45 minutes in length, and we've left time at the end of the presentation for questions. I invite everyone to use the chat feature to submit any questions during the presentation. During this webinar, we will discuss strategies on efficient GRES preparation, submission, and outstanding results. You will learn best practices on how to improve your GRES assessment response, trends from the 2016 survey, and how planning ahead and preparing in advance could help boost your score. Now, I'd like to introduce you to our speakers for today's webinar, Healy Lev and Dan Winters. Healy Lev, Executive Vice President of GOBI, earned her bachelor's degree in architecture and an MBA in international business and entrepreneurship from Northwestern University. Healy now helps, helps clients turn big data into big opportunities and implement ESG strategies through GOBI's platform and consulting services. Dan Winters is the head of North American GRESP and has responsibility for furthering GRESP's international scope by engaging institutional investors throughout North America, establishing industry partnerships, and expanding GRESP coverage among REITs and private equity firms. He previously served the USGBC as Senior Fellow for Business Strategy and Finance. He earned his master's in real estate finance and development from Harvard, his MBA from Southern Methodist University, and is an alumni of the University of Wisconsin real estate program. Dan, the stage is yours. Aha, good. I'm unmuted now. Hi, good afternoon uh, to myself and on the East Coast and my colleagues in Amsterdam and good morning to the folks in Gobi in Chicago and uh, further to the West. Uh, my goal today is to give an introduction to GRESB and talk a little bit about uh, you know the 2016 results, where we're at and uh, where you're going and why it's, it's honestly important to get started early. So with this, uh-oh, There we go. Let's see. Great. Okay. So here's my contact information uh, for those that want to uh, get a hold of me when this is done, and uh, we will uh, provide all of the slides uh, to the folks on the phone. And so with this, I thought that we'd start just by reinforcing and, and iterating where GRESB came from uh, to understand where where it is now and where it's going. So GRESB was started in 2009, and we have a very uh, simple mission. We believe that investors matter. And GRESB was started by several institutional investors, two in, in the Netherlands and one in the UK, and uh, we'll talk about those in a moment, uh, with, with the mission to protect shareholder value uh, by looking at real assets, including real estate infrastructure and, and other areas of the capital stack, and, uh, such as real estate debt, and understanding the sustainability performance, what, what in the capital markets is known as ESG, Environmental, Social, and Governance Characteristics. Uh, and look for opportunities and, and risks within the portfolios of institutional investors. So if you consider market behavior, and you know, we're all in the real estate industry, uh, but if you consider it on any industry vertical, whether it's tr transportation, software, utilities, right, there's a, uh, a distribution of market behavior out there. And that market behavior will, you know, there's regulation, which are the rules of the game, rules of business, uh, laws and, and regulations are very important. And there are those that will straddle that line, uh, but typically the, the market behavior that's out there is a normal distribution curve. Uh, what we see more often are, is leadership, leadership emanating from companies that are doing things above and beyond uh, you know, regulation or, or you know, what their peers are doing uh, in order to get competitive advantage to uh, find financial opportunities and whatnot. So in the real estate industry, we've been thinking about it from a building level. 
and these building labels have, have emerged over the past, mm, call it two decades almost. Uh, so that's LEED, that's the Canada uh, Energy Star, Neighbors is the equivalent in Australia, uh, and, and, and Green Star and Briam are, are some international building labeling standards. And what they're, what they're designed to do is create an economic signal on leadership of, of what it means to, to have a building that has attributes that are uh, you know, meant to address risk uh, and, and opportunity from an investment standpoint, from a leasing standpoint, to all the various stakeholders that are involved in buildings. Well, if you take that concept and move it up to the portfolio level where institutional investors play, you know, I've been, been hitting on these ideas of opportunity and risk, and efficient capital markets utilize transparency on you know, as much information as possible in order to really get at these issues of opportunity and risk. So what GRESB does is we work to assess companies and private equity funds in order to drive greater efficiency in the capital markets. We do it by three different assessments that we have. You know, GRESB real estate was started in 2009. We're going to show some data on that, uh, how it's grown over the years. And this is directed at property companies, developers, and fund managers. Two years ago, we offered up a, a, you know, an extension into the capital stack on real estate debt. And we're looking at the ESG performance of either real estate lenders or portfolio owners of debt instruments, which are you know, the private equity funds have, have emerged since the, uh, you know, the challenges of 2008 to fill some of the funding gaps. And many of our institutional investors hold positions in these type of funds. The last is GRESB Infrastructure, which was uh, released this year, inaugural. And uh, I've got a slide or two on that at the end. Uh, but we assess the ESG performance of infrastructure assets and portfolios. So I've alluded earlier to our, our investor members. Uh, this is a screenshot of those folks. And the three that are highlighted in green are the founding members of GRESB. And these uh, firms utilize the analytic tools that we offer them to understand how the participants are doing on the contours of ESG that make up the GRESB assessment and how organizations are improving over time. Our investor members value transparency over absolute performance. Uh, that said, you know, they're looking for uh, companies and funds to engage, to participate in GRESB, and to benchmark yourselves against your peers, and then set forward a course to improve as 2016 moves to 2020 and beyond. So new for 2017 in North America, uh, you're going to be hearing that we've added CalPERS as uh, an investor member on the real estate side. They're also one of our founding members of uh, the infrastructure side. And I think that this will bode well for continued engagement on ESG in North America. So GRESB has three different competencies that are you know, at a very high level. Right? We s systematically assess a company's funds and, and you know, separate accounts and joint venture vehicles. So there's a systematic assessment of ESG criteria. We then provide objective scoring on these uh, attributes, and we do so in a peer benchmarking structure. So the B in GRESB is benchmark. Global Real Estate Sustainability Benchmark is where it came from. And the benchmark is a very important construct uh, because it becomes, and you compare yourselves against your peers, always moving, always moving forward. So from an application standpoint, we've been talking about our institutional investors. They typically use this for three different purposes, positive screening, portfolio monitoring, and, and basically integration within the investment management process. Uh, when you make a commitment to a fund over a 10-year life, you want to see that the fund is being managed very well. Uh, and so this becomes a, a level of engagement. On the participant side, and, and I'm actually much more, I know I've been talking about the institutional investors, but I'm actually more focused on the participants because my job is to go and meet with private equity fund managers and REITs and talk about their performance and engage them to, to participate in GRESB and, and put forward some management processes that get them sort of moving forward on these issues over time. So what those groups use GRESB for are really two things. One is comparative business intelligence. What are you doing with your programs and how does that compare against your peer group, whether that peer group is by sector, uh, you know, hotels, office, retail, industrial, or by geography. 
in North America or you know, a comparison or, or even more globally. And once the results come out, firms typically use the results for internal engagement, uh, for gap analysis within their programs, and putting together some, some business planning and making you know, concrete business decisions now as to things that they would like to do, programs they would like to implement in 2017, 2018, because you know, we can't just uh, you know, snap your fingers and all of a sudden have a great sustainability program. It takes diligence, it takes work, and in my experience, it's typically a multi-year process for organizations to get better. So this is a list and this is more for uh, inspection when you get these uh, slides uh, following this, but this is the, the list of, you know, a partial list mostly of the 217 private equity firms and 190 listed companies that participated in GRES last year. And we have really good industry coverage. We don't have everybody. Uh, there are those that uh, uh, I am aware that have been getting GRES ready and are getting ready to participate in 2017 and we welcome them into, into the uh, benchmarking process. From a conceptual standpoint, we've been talking about the institutional investors at the top, which is the green box, and capital markets matter and capital markets will drive uh, you know, efficiency up and down that chain. Uh, at the bottom of this, and, and you see in the lower left, we've talked about the building labels. You know, it's, it's very clear that there are random acts of sustainability that happen in portfolios uh, throughout the globe. And what GRESB does is it provides a, a framework to engage these and communicate what's happening in the portfolio upwards to the capital markets. So GRESB is a company in portfolio level assessment. And we find that the, the vast majority, if not all of our participants, are also signatories to the UNPRI. So I want to dive in a little bit and talk about the GRESB framework for the real estate side. Uh, for those of you on the call that are familiar with it, there's seven aspects that make up the uh, GRESB assessment. And it, there are issues on how uh, firms are managed, the policies and disclosures that they have that inform that management. Uh, whether or not they have monitoring and environmental management systems in place, a uh, robust risk and opportunity uh, platform from which to make business decisions on energy water waste improvements within the portfolio, and various uh, performance indicators uh, that, that bubble up over time. Obviously, stakeholder engagement is very important. Uh, keeping tenants is the best way to maintain a good, solid cash flowing portfolio. Uh, as opposed to uh, absorbing vacancy and uh, uh, trying to release into what can be uh, you know, sometimes a difficult market, other times an opportunistic market. The GRESB score, uh, it's, there's, there's 100 points available. The GRESB score is broken up into uh, these allotments for each of the seven buckets. And with that, you know, doing GRESB is, you know, there's a saying in the industry, it's easy to do GRESB, right? It's a, a free assessment. We could all sit down and, and do it in an afternoon, but I would not advise it because it's, it's the other part of the saying is it's difficult to do GRESB well. And GRESB is a series of 42 questions, and it uh, asks for a lot of policies, a lot of validation of those policies. It asks for a lot of data on energy, water, waste within the portfolio. And so over time, we've had this ecosystem evolve of GRESB data partners that offer services to participants uh, to help them better track their energy, water, waste, and greenhouse gas emissions. And so GRESB offers an API. Uh, it can be used by firms like Gobi, uh, the host of this webinar. It can also be used by, by others within our, our ecosystem. And Last year, we had over 20,000 of our assets, and, and we received uh, information on 66,000 assets globally, uh, and well over a third of those came in using uh, data platforms uh, such as Gobi's through this automated API. Uh, and this is very important as we continue to move forward on uh, gaining institutional quality data and continuing to refine and, and increase the quality of the data that we receive. So with that, yeah, you know, and we'll talk in a second about the process of GRESB and, and the timeline on the calendar. Uh, we, once we receive the submissions at the end of the assessment period, 100% of those submissions go through what we call an all-participant check. 
So any open text boxes are read, hyperlinks uh, that are, are offered up as, as evidence, whether it's a hyperlink or a document, are taken a look at to make sure that they're valid. Uh, we then move into a validation plus uh, method, and, and this process was designed for us by PricewaterhouseCoopers, and it's designed to help us uh, you know, engage with the industry, uh, get very high quality data, and be able to offer that both to you as participants within the benchmark, as well as to our investor members. In the validation plus side, uh, we're really diving into that complete assessment and looking and reading the documents that are uploaded and looking for data accuracy. And at the very bottom of this is, is what we have our, our site visits. And that's where several members of the GRES team will uh, show up to a randomly selected group uh, and, and we will meet in their offices in July or August, sometimes via, via phone, uh, and sit down and really you know, painstakingly go through the assessment and, and talk about how the data was derived, uh, where it comes from, and, and, and understand much more about your management process. So the validation process is very robust on the GRESP side, and then when it's all done, we offer a series of tools to our participants. The first week of September is when the results are released, and all participants th uh, that engage with GRESP receive an annual scorecard. That scorecard goes to you and only you, and it shows at a very high level the score that you received. Uh, it, it talks about where you stand compared to your peers, and it breaks down on the E, the S, and the G uh, what, uh, what your performance is for this particular period. For those that want to learn more, uh, you can uh, acquire a benchmark report. A benchmark report is this business intelligence that I referred to earlier. It is a very detailed question-by-question -question breakdown. Question number one, you answered yes, 82% of your peers answered the same, uh, and then it breaks down by the, the various sub-elements of that question, how those peers answered. To the extent that you didn't get full points for a particular question, it will describe that, or it will, it will show that, and then it will describe how your peers answered that question in aggregate uh, compared to how you answered it. So for those participants that are members of GRESB, uh, this uh, benchmark report is, is a benefit of membership. Uh, for those that are not, you can certainly purchase this a la carte. Uh, and, and then on the final side, for our GRES members, uh, whether it's the participants or the fund managers, uh, you have access to the portal where you can do some portfolio analysis and, and run some metrics against your score compared to, to peers. So I've alluded to the timeline. Here it is. Uh, so this is the 2017 timeline. And GRESB is uh, very predictable in how it works. It's open the entire second quarter for participation. And so uh, leading up to the second quarter, we're working on our IT infrastructure to make sure that everything is set up for the April 1st launch. And that's when the GRESB assessment opens. And companies and, and fund managers can get in there and start putting in data, uploading documents, and, and reviewing things that they uh, had entered last year. Uh, we work to pre-fill and, and drive down the uh, costs of, you know, both time costs and, and, and money costs of, of participating in GRES because we realize that there's a cost on, on our participants. And so to the extent that you participated prior, um, many of the open text boxes and other documents uh, that, that were uploaded are available uh, for your review and reassertion for the uh, following participation year, in this case 2017. So as organizations go through this process, uh, the, a very important deadline to keep in mind is June 15th. That is the deadline to request a response check. A response check is a very high level view of the uh, response that organizations are getting ready to submit. Uh, your response must be complete before requesting a response check. And at that time, our team runs it through a series of scripts looking for you know, obvious data errors or anomalies within uh, the, the assessment and will offer some observations that allow organizations to think about refinements or whatnot prior to the submission date, which is the end of the second quarter. July and August are our data validation uh, time periods, and that's when we go through that validation process. So the first week of September, we release the scorecards, we release the benchmark reports, and that's the opportunity for participants 
to look at their results, consider how they did and what they want to do for the, the upcoming year, and get working on business plans and, and gathering data. And then in 2018, we do it all over again. So this slide is just meant to, to illustrate how the communication process works between institutional investors and portfolio owners. And portfolio owners are, have product that's fed by real estate developers. So this is what GRESB is, is meant to do. Uh, and on the result side, we'll just talk very briefly about uh, how GRESB has grown over time. So in 2010, we had nearly 200 participants. And over time, this has grown to last year where we had 759 participants. Every year, we continue to add some at the top in the green box. And also, uh, some will fall out the bottom. And that's typically due to private equity funds that are closing and, and, and liquidating, mergers and acquisitions within the industry, or, or other changes that happen organizationally. Here's what that industry coverage looks like. It's a global scope, 759 entities, 66,000 assets in 63 countries. And from a geographic distribution standpoint, there's, a, there's a, by numbers, a dominance in Europe U.S. has grown over time, right? I, I anticipate that we're going to break the 200 mark, uh, given the firms that I'm hearing that are getting GRESB ready in 2016 for next year. Um, but from a numeric standpoint, from an assets under management standpoint, New York, or I'm sorry, uh, the U.S. clearly dominates uh, with roughly half of the assets that are under management uh, uh, being domiciled here in the U.S. So from the North American participation rate to break that down and what that looks like over the four-year trend, uh, here it is, uh, 16 new additions last year. And on the right-hand side is a uh, representative sample of, of some of those companies and funds, whether it's REITs or private equity firms, that participate in the GRESB assessment. So the results, we have a, a four-quadrant model. And on the left-hand side of this axis is management and policy, how our company is doing uh, on those issues, and then over time, how implementation and measurement is happening. So you can see this up and to the right uh, trend line of, of scores from 2011 moving up to 2016, continual improvement. Catching up with Australia it will be a daunting challenge. The Aussies are, are quite ahead, and uh, they're a very competitive group. Uh, but I'm confident that we're, we're closing the gap, and uh, uh, over time, I think that we're going to get very close to how Australia is doing. So some things to note, there's roughly a 4x difference between the top 10% in GRESB on their score and the bottom 10% in GRESB. I offer that those are, you know, in, in my view, organizations on the upper right have their eye on the ball on ESG, and ones on the lower left that are kind of starting to get their, their frameworks in, in, in order and, and engage internally and externally on these issues. Something to be aware of, uh, some data that we ran this year are performance trends with a cohort. Uh, so the initial cohort uh, of 2010 that's been participating year on year on year for seven years started off with an average uh, right around 40, and they're now leading the pack with an average cohort score of 70. And it declines every year. This is no surprise to us, right? Every year are able to take things that they implemented last year and showcase them this year. And so here's what that looks like. If you're just starting out, uh, you know, I, hitting these numbers is, is to be expected, right? And the goal is to participate and improve. So last little bit here is uh, back to this distribution uh, chart is we see companies and funds from a one star to a five star also flowing into the same type of distribution uh, behavior and, and that's what our assessment is meant to bring out. So two last little things, GRESB infrastructure, what this is, right? We're looking at private equity funds, government, uh, you know, ownership of various uh, things that are infrastructure related or special purpose entities on conventional energy, toll roads, renewable energy, airports, things that, that look like infrastructure are able to get an ESG assessment. From a debt standpoint, we work with private equity debt funds and primary lenders, and these are the similar, re these are the results that we're seeing 
companies are looking at regulatory risk, whether or not there's energy ratings within their portfolios, where these assets are, are based and, and located from a transportation standpoint. So uh, last point is that we have also uh, offered up to the industry some uh, the green bond guidelines for the real estate sector. These are meant to go hand in hand with the green bond principles uh, that were issued by the International Capital Markets Association several years ago. And it provides a framework for publicly listed companies, for uh, you know, the Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, to you know, create and issue green bonds backed by property within the real estate sector. And uh, it's designed for bond underwriters, un uh, placement firms, and, and investors. So there's a, just a little bit about that. We'll just include this in the uh, documents that you receive uh, and what this covers. And so I'm going to hold off on questions and, and turn this over to Healy. And she's going to talk about Gobi and, and its product offerings and how it's very helpful to participating in GRESP. And then we'll take some questions at the end. So with that, how about if I turn this back over to the Gobi team? All right, Dan, thank you as always for your pearls of wisdom in your tranquil yet invigorating NPR voice. Um, appreciate it. Appreciate you joining us and appreciate uh, the partnership with Gresb. It's certainly been a fruitful one over the last few years for us. So I think Dan gave uh, an amazing background on the program for folks who are new, folks who are veterans. Um, the focus of my piece of this presentation is going to be um, why you want to start early. So, so obviously the GRESB reporting season for this past year is done. Results are in. Um, everyone has digested them. It was an exciting week in September. Um, and then you might be thinking, well, you know, we have, we have time till next year. We have time till spring of next year. Um, my goal for today is to, to tell you and convince you why you don't why you don't have time and why the time to start planning for next year, if you haven't already, was yesterday. Um, all right. So just a little bit about Gobi. Uh, I know many folks on the phone are already uh, friends, peers, colleagues, clients. Um, but for those who don't know, so we are a VC-backed firm. We are based in Chicago. Um, we bring the expertise through our co-founders and owners of um, Ariba through the software realm, PwC through the management strategy consulting realm, and Jones Lang LaSalle through the real estate realm. We are um, actually just about to move into a new office at the end of the year that will accommodate 100 people, um, which we're pretty excited about. And, um, you know, GRESB is, is one of our key partnerships, but you can see along the bottom a couple other partnerships as well. SASB, um, Energy Star Partner of the Year, um, now for three years, was sustaining partner this past year, and of course, one of a handful of lead proven providers um, globally. So um, based in the cloud, grounded in performance. So what does that mean? So at Gobi, we're all about, so we're really the um, Google Analytics of commercial real estate, if you will, uh, through the lens of sustainability. So we're focused on centralizing your data in a single platform, in a single place, making sense of the noise, um, leveraging that data. So being able to take that information and use it. And then not only just use it to do analytics and, and whatnot, but um, also to drive profitability. Because as much as we are real estate and sustainability people, we're also business people. And we understand why, we under, while we understand that green is the right thing to do, um, green is also, uh, the different kind of green is also a motivator of why, why you do it. Um, can flip to the next slide. So we've been told that this image resonates with a lot of folks. Um, not only on the phone, but just in, in, the, in the industry, in the market, is that data right now, the current way of doing things, it lives in silos. So be it multiple um, different systems, you have your ERP system, various systems at the building operations level. Um, much of the data still lives in individual Excel spreadsheets on people's uh, hard drives. So it's really hard to get visibility, especially when you have a larger portfolio, into what's going on at my assets, how are they performing, um, who are my winners? Who are my losers? And then to report that up in a way that's consumable um, to investors, to peers, uh, and whatnot. So really, that's that's what drives our mission: um, is making sense of all of that. 
So just some stats, we are just under a billion square feet in our platform, about 3,500 buildings. I believe we surpassed 3,500 buildings since this slide was made. Um, and 21,000, I always like that. It's a staggering stat of utility bills uh, processed through our system each month. Um, energy reduction in our software, 24%. And um, the other thing, of course, is hours of time spent at the property, because while energy sustainability, reducing operations costs, um, driving NOI is important, it's not um, often the, the fire that's burning brightest at the property day, day to day and, and what the teams are focused on. So we understand that. And that's why we're here to help. All right. So um, just in this past year, focus on GRESB. Um, 2016 has been an amazing year for us and for our clients. Every U.S. fund that we submitted, um, that we work with, earned a green star, which is obviously the top quadrant in the GRASP scoring model. So something we're really proud of. Additionally, our clients have seen an average improvement of 35% from their 2015 scores. So it's a pretty big jump year over year, 35%. Furthermore, 50% of our clients scored within the top five of their sector, and we did also have a handful of sector leaders. So a um, couple here were able to name by name, a couple others weren't, but um, just to give you an example. So different types of funds, commercial office, mixed use, um, retail, um, and, and all with staggering and impressive results. So um, one, of our, one of our office clients was the sector leader. They increased their score by 27% year over year. Um, Pine Tree, why we love their story is because they're new to Grez this past year, very first year they submitted, um, very first year that they even learned of Grez and, and kind of committed to, to doing it and became the sector leader for retail in their first time. It's awesome, just really proud of their accomplishment. Um, Another office fund went from 19 score on their KPI in 2015 to a 40, so more than doubled their score. Um, and you can see some of the other stats. On uh, Federal Realty Investment Trust, another one of our retail clients, mixed use, 97% um, increase. That's staggering stat, um, 73 out of 100 points, outstanding. So these are just to highlight a couple. So. When I step back and think about, um, you know, the upcoming year, the reporting season, and, and maybe where these folks who made such dramatic improvements from 2015 reporting year, um, reporting on the calendar year of 2014 to the 2016 submission reporting on the calendar year of 2015, think of it as training for a marathon or triathlon or a big race, right? So if I know I'm going to run this big race next May, um, I'm not going to start training for it. I'm not going to download the Couch to 5K app a month before and just kind of hope for the best. This is something you need to prepare for. It's something that you need to be methodical about. And if you want to be um, a leader, a sector leader, um, achieve impressive results like so many of our clients have, starting early is a game changer. And it's going to be a strategy that will pay off for you. Um, so. And, and you might ask, okay, so starting early, is that just for people who are new to GRESB? Is that, what if I've been doing GRESB for five years and I'm a well-oiled machine? You know, can I just uh, download the Couch to 5K app next spring and hope for the best? So let's let's walk through that a little bit. So if you're brand new to GRESB, so like Pine Tree mentioned first year, um, why would you do this? What are, what are the benefits of someone who's new to GRESB um, dipping their toe in the water for the first time? So you're going to get some context of how you perform against your peer groups, which I think um, it's just human nature, right? People like to, to know how they stack up against their peers. Um, you're going to collect property level data, energy, water, waste data over a two-year period, so a meaningful period in time historically um, of these key performance indicators. You'll take a deeper look into your internal policies. So the great thing about GRASB as a um, sustainability benchmark is that it's not just about the straight KPI metrics of energy, water, waste, but it's really giving you some insight into your organization as to governance and ESG and how your organization runs, um, you know, not just how sustainable your assets perform. Identify risks and opportunities to improve performance. So the spirit of GRESB is always continuous improvement, year-over-year um, -year improvement, and no one's going to penalize you for where you're at. Just want to see you get better and, and help you get better. 
All right, so if you're new to GRESB, what's your plan of action? So um, if you work with someone like us, we would do a GRESB kickoff meeting where we'd want to hear, like, why are you doing this? You know, is it just because your investors are pressuring you to? Is it because you believe in it? Um, is it because your organization, you're getting internal pressure from um, perhaps the C-suite at your own organization? So why, why are we doing this? Understand your goals and, and help you get there. Um, properly introduce GRESB to the properties and why we're doing it through a thorough onboarding process because we need information from the properties. And oftentimes, if they don't understand the big picture of why your organization, excuse me, why your organization has committed to doing this, they might not be as cooperative, uh, might be more difficult, and it'll affect the score. Um, so, of course, gather the necessary data, with very met various methodologies of doing that, um, path of least resistance being data automation, of course, where our software is fully integrated with over a thousand utilities in North America. We can pull the data. Where we can't, we have um, other methods of data acquisition through other forms. Um, then we'll re review the survey questions with the executive team. So really find out there's questions that uh, we need to ask HR, we need to ask legal, we need to get input from other departments within an organization organization to complete a successful GRES application. Collect all the documentation necessary to prove that you're doing all the right things from the asset, from the organization, around projects, improvements, retrofits, um, details about the assets themselves and the organization. Review results, um, have your team review results, and then of course set goals for next year so that as this is a continuous process year over year, not a meant to be a one-time stagnant thing that you do. All right, and if you're brand new, um, things that you'll notice differently if you work with a firm like ours uh, versus on your own. So we'll, we do a really good job of communication, So, and that's key here. Change management is probably the hardest piece of implementing uh, an initiative like GRESB or anything else, just getting people um, to do what you need them to do, to, to get the ducks in a row, to extract the information you need, to do it in a meaningful way, why, and have people understand why it's important to cooperate and to leverage a technology that's going to help you do it in the most efficient way rather than having a bunch of people scan and email PDF bills and, and try to have someone on the other end make sense of it. Um, in the same orderly fashion, gather internal policies, organize portfolio details again through leveraging software platform that's going to help you do that better than by manual processes, Excel spreadsheets, and brute force. Um, and then with the ultimate goal of being providing transparency to your shareholders and, um, and doing continuous improvement at the actual asset level to drive um, to drive the uh, improvements year over year. Right. So go to the next slide, please. All right, so now let's talk about the veteran players. So I think that there is um, perhaps a common misperception that, wow, if I've been doing this for years and years and years, you can only improve so much, right? Like how much more can I improve? But um, I think what we find is surprisingly year over year, there's always um, something that can be tightened up, something that can be improved, data that can be captured more efficiently and effectively. So sometimes it's not even um, that you're not doing all the right things already, but it's about the ability of capturing that data and reporting that data in a manner um, that can be digested by GRASP and displayed properly. So um, benefits for veteran players. So continue to refine, um, discover new goals and areas for improvement. Of course, also your portfolios are fluid, right? So we're constantly in acquisition mode and disposition mode. Uh, a portfolio is rarely stagnant. So there's going to be nuances and improvements and things to be made just given the nature of the portfolios and the, the fluid nature of the portfolios. And then, of course, always improving transparency and improving data capture and data collection. Um, so similar similar plan of action to um, with a new player as far as our process goes. A lot of um, communication meetings, um, though of course they're, they're productive meetings where we try to only use your team for what we need them for, not um, to bother anyone for things that they that's not necessary that can be collected via data automation via the technology. So we're trying to do that first. Um, and then again, just prepare the submittal. So one thing I will say, the feedback that I've gotten from our team is that the first year tends to be the most difficult because, of course, you're doing this for the first time. You have to communicate it to your organization, capture all this information. But then the second year you go in, you have um, legacy data from, from the year before. So it becomes more of an exercise of fine tuning rather than starting from scratch, which is helpful. So anyone that um, kind of survived and made it through year one, you can look forward to year two. All right, and um, so 
with the veteran players, so folks that have been doing this for a while, we're going to continue to monitor performance, um, monitor efficiency projects in, within the portfolio. And then you can also use the GRES platform. So we did a webinar a um, couple months back on SASB. And, and these organizations are communicating because they also realize that, you know, having to submit to a bunch of different entities, so be it SASB, Leader in the Light, GRES, LEAD, WELL, um, you know, and, and the alphabet soup of organizations that exist, there is some overlap. and um, that's, I'll talk about a little bit too, but that's where Gobi comes in because you are reporting the same piece of data um, to many different entities, often just in a slightly different format or because they have a different web portal. So it becomes a lot of redundancy and a lot of extra work and burden on your team. Um, and of course, we always want to go for the low hanging fruit, but the more that the, the veteran players do this, you might have to kind of take that next layer deeper and see what, what goes beyond just the low hanging fruit. All right, so um, as I mentioned before, it's it's not just about sustainability. Sustainability is great. Everyone wants to do the right thing. We want to leave a better planet for our, our children, our grandchildren. But uh, we also we're, we're also businesses, right? Everyone's running a business, and we have um, shareholders with expectations, and we need to be profitable. Um, so so this all ties into each other. Um, we're at Gobi. We're focused on the KPI data, so that energy, water, waste data, uh, the quality of it the acquisition of it, the timely acquisition of it, um, alleviating the burden on the properties of having to paper push using the technology, data automation, um, and whatever methodology we can. Continuity year over year. So, you know, if you did all this legwork in your reporting year one, you want to, you, you can expect to do less legwork in reporting year two. Um, and then I'll talk a minute about consulting and, and how it's all in one platform. So in the marketplace now, um, you know, there's there's a lot of folks out there telling you that, that that they do a lot of things. So one thing that I will mention that's unique and special about Gobi is that we do the GRESB consulting piece, so around all of the management policies, as well as the technology, data automation, KPI, software, all under one roof. So you'll get a lot of folks out there that are independent consultants. They can help you with GRESB strategy with consulting, but they don't have a technology platform to help you aggregate and collect data. So either they have to go out to a third party, and that could be us, um, or they have to go through an RFP process, and you're going to get a bunch of cooks in the kitchen. And similarly, you might have a technology platform that um, can help you collect and, and aggregate and gather data, but um, oftentimes it's it's dependent upon you know how good the information is coming in and who's kind of steering steering the ship and and guiding the project. So with us, it's it's seamless. There's one cook in the kitchen. We're the technology partner. We're the consulting partner, and the results speak for themselves. So Bo's the question: Can I do this alone? And um, sure. You could do a lot of things alone um, at your building. You could do your own landscape maintenance at your buildings. You could property manage your own buildings. You could do your own accounting by hand in Excel spreadsheets. But most people don't, right? Most people know it's not the highest and best use of their time. And they engage with consultants and partners to do what they do best. And, I th and again, I think the results speak for themselves. So I did hear someone um, talking about the fact that folks that work with consultants um, and technology partners have better results in GRESB. Why? Because that's what we do. That's who we are. It's what we do all, do, all day, every day. That's what our proprietary technology um, drives efficiencies and improves. So sure, you can do it alone, but um, you know you might not you might not have as good of results. And of course, and you know what? I should also take a mo take a moment to mention that it depends on the size of your internal team too, right? So I've talked to folks who have really robust in-house sustainability teams. You know, multiple personnel. They have the the capability and the ability to take this on internally. Amazing. So they might just need a technology partner. Happy to do that. Um, but again, so it's just it's it's an extension of your team and and what you guys are able to do. So turning big data into opportunities. And what that really means is Gobi is going to provide you a software platform, a mechanism for data collection, data validation, data aggregation, um, drive it all into one system so we can connect with other systems, like I mentioned, as the utility systems um, and the data sources. We put it all into our system where we validate it. So there's parameters within our system that will flag it if it's outside certain acceptable parameters. So for example, year over year, if a utility bill um, increases 15% or whatever threshold we decide the system's going to kick it back out and, and flag it. Um, and then from the back end, so once all the information's in our system and organized, it can go connect with any of the other systems, um, be it Energy Star for local ordinance reporting or the award, be it SASB, GRESB, LEED, WELL, um, 
CDP insert, whatever it might be on the other end. But the point is collecting the same piece of data one time, validating it, aggregating it, and then reporting out through one platform. Um, and our platform will speak to all these other ones so you're not um, having redundancies in data entry. And this is going to be you when you finish your marathon, triathlon, whatever it may be in May or June, because you started preparing this year. Um, there's still time, right? We've got two more months this year. The GRASB submission that we're talking about for next spring is, is reporting on calendar year January through December 2016. So we still got November and December this year to look at policies, implement things, make changes. But kind of like taxes, the books close December 31st, right? So your, your window of opportunity is shrinking. Today is the day. Make it happen. Um, and, and we're here to help. And with that, I think we've eaten into a little bit of questions time, but um, we will do what we can to answer all the questions that come through. And whatever we can't answer right now, we, will, um, we can take aside and, and answer at a later time. Great. Thank you both. Now we'll go into Q&A, as Healy mentioned. And our first question how many years does it take to reach a green star? So this is Dan. I'll take I'll take that one on. And, and and if you'd like, it's my understanding that my my microphone might have cut out a little bit while showing the timeline. Uh, I can do that, or I can also verbalize it. Uh, you know, Res is open in the second quarter, uh, and and so it opens on April first, and it closes on on July first or June thirtieth, whatever that Friday is. So how many years does it take to, to get a green star? It really depends. There's no heuristic for this. There is, um, you know, the assessment is available online on our website. You can go take a look at it. And I think the point that I was hearing from Healy most often was getting started early is, is always helpful because the challenge with GRESB is it asks you for uh, a fair amount of data. And it's really all about can you, can a participant uh, a private equity fund manager get the data and oftentimes when the answer is no and so if you have your data house in order and you've got management policies and you've kind of been part of this whole uh, ESG conversation for years as an organization and it's baked into your DNA hey you can get a green star in, in year one no problem uh, and so you heard about pine tree right they did a really good job this year um, Often, more often, it's a couple, three years, right? You participate, you get that business intelligence, and you set about a plan of improvement. So there's no real general, right? But uh, I would say two to three years is common. Yeah, and what I would add to that again, um, you know, we find that folks that partner up with, with a technology partner, a consulting partner like us, perhaps can get there quicker. Why? Because we do this on behalf of upwards of 25 funds. We do this every year. We know what kind of answers the GRESB survey is looking for. We know how to tweak it and frame it so that you'll get those points. So we are really proud when folks like Pine Tree, I hope you guys are on the line getting all these shout outs, but when, when folks like Pine Tree come in and do it year one. So we can't, we certainly can't take all the credit, but I think it definitely helps. But to Dan's point, um, organizations that are already doing the right thing, it's just about capturing it properly, putting it on paper in an efficient manner and submitting that and communicating and telling your story. And that's where we can really be helpful. And organizations that are maybe new to this, dipping a toe in the water, don't have any policies, have never really done anything um, to improve the performance of their assets, it could take a couple years to ramp up. So, um, but not impossible in the first year. Not impossible in the first year. And, and I do want to offer, right, so, so uh, you know, we do want this to come from organizations' DNA. What, who are you? What are you about? And so having a facilitated conversation with a group like Gobi or some of the others that are out there that do this, absolutely do that. Um, you know, don't take somebody's canned response and put it in there and call it good. That's not going to work for GRESP. It needs to come from who you are as an organization. I just really want to reinforce that point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next question. Can you please tell us a little more about the API to lead CDP and SASB? Sure. So um, might be a little bit more of a technical question than I am prepared to field in the remaining 2.3 minutes that we have. Um, but we can certainly take that offline. But so our goal um, at Gobi is to be an, an integrator. So I mentioned you have all these data points, you have all these inputs, utility bills, occupancy information, property data, um, property lists, acquisitions, dispositions. 
and you have all these things on the back end, right? So, so Grez kind of caught fire um, in the last couple of years, and and so the point is to get all that information into one system, and then our goal at Gobi is on the back end to connect seamlessly to all those systems, so that once your data is in the system, we can push to um, you know Energy Star Portfolio Manager. We are already integrated with Lead Dynamic Plaque, so. Um, for those folks who are doing lead dynamic plaque, this, the data goes into our system and can connect and speak with, um, you know, the USGBC system. Um, CDP a bit more complex, so I would like to table that with whoever asked this question and, and set up a separate call. Um, and then the way it works with SASB, SASB basically approves our system, so they say they they take some time to dissect our system, look at the inputs, look at how we get their our data. Um, the data integrity of the data validation process, and then they basically say um, Gobi is a SASB partner. So um, if your information is going into the Gobi system and through the Gobi process, as far as we're concerned at SASB, it's SASB approved and it's proper for the protocol that we put out. So that so each um, entity on the back end is a little bit different, but um, our job is to to not only integrate with the one with the the um, the, the rating systems, the benchmarks of today, but also to predict and get ahead of what, it, what it's going to be tomorrow for you. And I would just offer that there's heightened awareness of the, you know, the data gathering process is, can be burdensome. And so a piece of data is a piece of data. And if it needs to go to multiple places, well, that's, that's good to the extent that it can be you know, sent out via APIs. Ultimately, organizations get information content from this data and to the extent that as, as Healy was mentioning before you find buildings that are are running hot or are running uh, differently than or suboptimally well we've got a lot of participants that are are using the GRESB framework to then look at their portfolio do management introspection and ultimately drive more dollars to their bottom line great thank you Healy and Dan um, next question can GRASP achievements be monetized? Yeah, so that's an interesting question. Um, I offer that our investor members are looking for companies that really have their eye on the ball on risk and opportunity. And so, you know, because it's a portfolio level assessment and it looks at organizations that are doing a good job, it really allows teams that are, it allows solid teams to differentiate themselves. And this can be very helpful at financial moments of truth, whether it's capital raising, whether it's uh, you know selling a building or selling a portfolio, and saying you know look here's who we are as an organization. Is it directly correlated? Hard to say. There's a lot of moving parts in any real estate deal and any merger and acquisition. Um, but these are good economic signals uh, on environmental, social, and governance issues that paint an entire picture or, or help paint a picture of an organization uh, that, that can be useful to, to maximizing financial value. Yeah, and I think, I mean, you asked directly if it can be monetized. So I think that's a main concern, especially nowadays, where, you know, you do a retrofit project, you replace light bulbs, you want to know what am I spending, what's my ROI, what's my payback, um, am, am I monetizing this investment? Same thing if you do a building certification. I think with Grez, I mean, anecdotally, you speak to kind of, um, it could be like the missed opportunities. So you have these investors now who are looking at, they look at Grez as an indicator of not just sustainability performance, but overall financial performance of a fund um, or an investment. Because it tends to be that the folks that perform well, so that as their assets perform well, and then their organization is kind of stellar and has their policies and procedures buttoned up and um, a really great mission around ESG, they also tend to perform better financially. So it's hard to directly say, you know, is this monetized, but perhaps it's attracting investors or satisfying investor requirements that wouldn't otherwise look at your fund, um, you know, unless you participate. And I offer for the listeners to go take a look at a couple of sustainability reports that are out there by Equity Residential, the second by Kilroy. And, you know, you can see how they use Grez to communicate the things that they're doing at an asset level and as a company level uh, that are meant to inform their stakeholders as to who they are as an organization. Great. I think we have time for one final question. Um, what is the average increase from year to year of GRESP scores? Well, that's a great question. I honestly don't know the answer to that question. I and and I think it would be 
difficult to understand in the aggregate. Um, what I view with organizations that participate in GRESB is they get a score, the score kind of hovers at the same uh, next year, and then they really roll up their sleeves and say, okay, we need to, we need to allocate some time and, and, and effort to this. And then there's a jump. And that jump can go from you know, the 40s to the 60s to the 70s, right? You saw that chart that I showed of the cohort year over year over year. And I think that that is a good aggregate indicator of, of the average increase over time. I'd take a look at that page. Yeah. And, I, and just anecdotally, I alluded to, um, you know, one client of ours, Federal Realty Investment Trust, had 37 points on their KPI in 2015 and then saw a 97 percent increase year over year. So perhaps that's the exception, not the rule. And, and our friends at Federal are just outstanding. But, um, you know, to go from 37 points to 73 points year over year. And again, I'm going to go back to the fact that um, not that their own accomplishments aren't amazing of their own avail, but they had a partner to help them navigate that and really be the catalyst for that improvement. If you gave me the presenter ball for just a moment, I can reshow that graphic. It's up to you. It's coming.